Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, what's going to be probably a very somber Sunday. Um, Um, as some of you uh, may have heard, um, this past week we lost Caleb. Caleb passed away. Um, Caleb Rowe, who uh, a lot of you know from Revolution. Um, you know, he was with Revolution three, four years. So... Kind of today is going to be about remembering our friend Caleb and, uh, you know, it's kind of a celebration of his life and mourning of, of a life gone way too soon. Um, I got a call from Brian Adeline this past week, um, I believe it was uh, Wednesday morning, maybe Tuesday morning, um, I believe Tuesday, uh, a call from Brian and um, letting me know that uh, Caleb had passed away. And it was, uh, you know, a bit of a shock. It was, it was, it was tough to take and, um, yeah, it's been a lot to take in. I, I had my kids for a few days, as usual. Um, and yesterday, I had uh, quite a few plans of getting things done, and my body just said, nope, not today. Um, we're not going to do that today. <laughs> so yesterday, I, I pretty much was sick in bed all day, just kind of overwhelmed, I think, by the grief and loss of uh, someone who was there. Uh, for me for a long time and a big part of, of, of revolution. And uh, if anybody knows me uh, well enough knows that revolution is not just something I do, but it is, it's a lifelong thing. It's, it's something that I live and breathe and, 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 and care about. And, and, uh, and so uh, when, when I lose uh, a member of the rev, <laughs> family um it's devastating especially someone who was as close as caleb was uh, i'm struggling really right now to be honest with you i don't even know where to start um so i guess i'll start at the beginning um how i met caleb very interesting um i was it was like any Sunday, and um, we were uh, meeting at Bryant Lake Bowl in uh, uptown Minneapolis. And uh, this young guy uh, walks up to me. He's probably was probably 29 at the time. And walks up to me and goes, hey, you know, I just I really love your work. I love what you're doing. I'm also a fan of Peter Rollins' work. And... Uh, Barry Taylor, and he's, you know, talking about all these folks that I know, and, and you know, and, he, and, and all these folks that really have, have, have impacted his life, and, and cool, and I'm like, oh, that's great, you know, and I'm like, well, where do you live, and he's like, well, I live here now, and I'm like, oh, that's great, and I said, so, um, you, where'd you move from, and he goes, well, I moved here from Kansas City, and I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's a big move, man. Um, I said, that's not far from uh, my, my folks or my dad, and I said, my mom is, is buried out near there, and, and uh, I said, so what did you move here for? You know, just generally talking like I would talk to anybody who's their first time at Revolution, and because I moved here to work for you, <laughs> and I was like, ooh. <laughs> 
red flags. <laughs> and the reason is, is because, I, believe it or not, over my years and years and years of, of doing revolution, I've had people who've done similar things, you know, and, um, and, and it's never end well, to be honest with you. You know, people go like, oh, because, you know, you, you, sometimes people who, who, who are willing to give up their whole life or move their whole life for, for what you're doing usually have these really big expectations. And um, I was like, wow, that's interesting. I'm like, well, I guess we can definitely talk, you know. And, and what Caleb did was pretty smart in some ways because, like, you know, I'm not the best at re returning emails and, and, and things like that, but he was like, he was going for it. Like he knew what he wanted and he did it. And, um, and I remember going home that day and talking to Karen, my wife at the time. Well, you know, this kid came into service today, you know, and said he wanted to work with me and, and do all this stuff. And he said, you know, he's good at podcasting and getting things, you know, up online and wants to help with the podcasts and help with the church and work with me and do all this stuff. And I was like, you know, th this stuff never ends well. And she goes, oh, no, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so I met with Caleb and, you know, he was just he was different. He was a go-getter. He, he wasn't going like, oh, I want you to do this for me or I want, you know, to set, you know, usually people say we want to set something up when they come to want to work for you. Oh, we're going to do this for you and this, for, you know, and then they just expect you to do it everything. And then they leave really disappointed that you didn't fulfill their, whatever their imagination was. Um, but Caleb's like, listen, I know how to work with this stuff. I was a big fan of your, you know, um, this is radio cast. I listen to that all the time. You know, because I, I think the podcast could be better. These are the things I can offer. I'm trying to start my own podcast channel. I've done podcasts for these people and these people and these people. And and uh, to be honest with you, at the time, I was a bit desperate because Paolo, who had worked with us for years, had decided to move on and wasn't putting up the, the, the we didn't want to put the services up anymore. So I needed help getting the services up on, on, on the uh, podcast. And so... I was like, all right. I mean, you know, like I said, I'll give you a, 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 a three week trial period, you know, and I laid it out, you know, really hard. And then I mentioned all the stuff that I mentioned, like this has never worked out before. So I don't want you to get your hopes up. And, and, uh, I mean, right off the bat, we were, you know, we were, me and Caleb were cooking, you know, we were, we were, it was happening. He was getting the, the talks up. He was figuring stuff out he was introducing me to all the people who came to revolution and making sure I knew them all even better. You know I mean? Because he was an extrovert and I'm an introvert and, and I found in, in this, in my work, it's always good to have an extrovert around, you know? And I said, well, Caleb, I'm like, this is great. You know? And I remember asking him like, what, what is it that you really want out of this though? You know I mean? Like I'm not, my star has faded, man. You know, I'm just here in, in the middle of Minnesota, you know, trying to start this church and, keep things going that I've been doing for years. And he goes, you know, he's like, well, I want to help you get this thing, continue to live the vision of revolution. But he goes, I'd also like to eventually be a pastor. And he's like, but I don't know if I believe in God or not and blah, blah, blah. And we had all these long talks about that. And, and a couple months later, I remember him just being like, man, you know, I like really feel like God's in my life again. I feel like revolution's brought something new to me that, that, you know, and I'm able to share this vision and, and people like Pete Rollins and, and Barry's work has been really important to me. And he always had big ideas, big visions, some we could never accomplish, but he was always trying to work out new things. And the cool thing was during this time, he was also working with other people in the city, helping them start their podcasts. He was doing production for other people. He was helping people out. And that was the thing about Caleb was is he always believed in people's dreams. And he was one of those people who was like, who, rare people whose, whose dream was not just to do their own thing, but to help other people see their visions and their dreams really come to pass, you know? And especially if he could use his talents 
to help people realize those things and make those things come to, to pass. He wanted to be a part of that. He wanted to make that happen. You know, and another thing was, is, is like, here he was, this kid who, like, all he came to town was with a car. You know, he didn't have anything. He ended up getting an apartment with some strangers, and he he worked his ass off. You know, when I first, when he first started working here, he was work, working in, in Minnesota. He was working in child care, you know, and he was great with kids, and as you guys know, I have kids. So often during the service, you know, he wasn't behind the camera, and he was actually the one who's like, we got to start doing video. We got to get video going. We got to get video going. But for a long time, he was just like watching my kids on the weeks that, weekends that I had my kids. Like during service, he would be up playing games and showing them videos and stuff so I could do my talks. Um, it was, uh, we just did it, you know? And, and that was uh, really a cool thing. And uh, I, around that time, um, had my marriage fell apart my marriage came to an end and uh i moved out of my house and i was in a very dark place you know and here i'm showing up trying to give these talks every sunday and i'm just want to give up i don't want to live anymore um and uh around that time i, I I attempted to take my own life. Um, you know, and Caleb, you know, like anybody who works with the revolution, wasn't always to have everything together. You know, he was a messy guy, just like me. And, and uh, he, he really stood up strong and rallied the community together, rallied people together, reached out to speakers, spoke himself. And, 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 and filled a spot when I wasn't able to, when I was mentally gone. You know, when, my, when, when I thought my world was over, and I thought this world was over as well. He just said, we're gonna keep doing it. We're gonna keep doing it. And honestly, at that time, it, it, I needed somebody there who could stand with me, who could walk with me, who could push me a little bit. Um, you know, on those Sundays, but on the rest of the days, being like, man, just take your time, get your life together, do what you need to do, go to therapist. He was also in therapy, so we could talk about therapy and medication changes and things like that. And, you know, I had to get electric shock therapy and my short-term memory was gone and all of this stuff. And he just said, we're going to keep this thing going. You know? And I honestly feel like there was months where I just don't know what was going on except that revolution still existed and that he was keeping it going and that I didn't have to shut everything down and I didn't have to do this. And uh, I finally got to the point where I was like, you know, I'm going to get back in, start these things going. And I, I remember one Sunday showing up and I was just, I didn't have anything to talk about. You know, and I was worried about the 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 talk. I was worried about the, <laughs> everything. And Caleb just walks up and just says, "Hey, what? Look, turn the recorder off. We don't have to have service this week, but we're all here. Why don't we just sit down and chat?" And we did. We all just sat down and had a conversation, and that was really amazing. And there was this other time where I showed up and. Um, I was just really broken. I think I had just given my kids to my ex. She was going to watch the kids for me and um, during service. And it was just hard to see my kids and, my, and I was just overwhelmed. I was just in so much pain. And uh, so I was, had my talk and sitting up in front of everybody and my Bible open, my books open, you know, sitting in the chair at Bryant Lake Bowl ready to go. And I was just you know, like a deer in headlights. And he just clicked into it and saw it. And what happened was, is I looked down and there's Caleb and he's just crying. He's just sobbing. And what happened within that moment was, I was like, are you okay? And he's like, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. He gets up out of his seat 
comes up, he's crying and he hugs me and I cried a little bit. He's like, we're gonna make it through this. Whatever you need to do, whatever you need to do, we're gonna make it through this, man. We're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna be okay. You know, we're gonna get through this. It's okay to feel this way. And, um, you know, that was a big deal for me because, um, It was just a hard, tough place to be. I didn't want to be alive. And uh, he, he, when he did this, um, I was able to just all of a sudden pull myself together and, and do my talk and do my work and, and, and do what needed to be done. And I'll tell you, that is one of those things that is... Uh, you don't want to take for granted. You know, what I found in this world is that there's a lot of people who don't care or can't care because they've got their own thing going on in their life and they're just really busy. And so when you genuinely find someone who gives a damn um, and who can be empathetic in a powerful way like that and, and to have them work with you um, is priceless. And at that moment, I realized, like, this is the guy, you know, this is, this is, you know, you know, sat down, started saying, I want you to read this book. I want you to do this book. I want you to do this. I'm starting to do like the Mr. Miyagi of ministry training because I'm all self-taught. So I'm giving him everything that really made a difference to me and helping him skip everything that didn't and you know, listen to this speaker or read this person's book, you know, do this, you know, and. And it was a struggle along the way, you know? I mean, the great thing about revolution is all, all the staff over all the history, you're not gonna find any perfect people and you're not gonna probably find anybody who hasn't been touched by pain or grief or brokenness. Um, you know, broken and beautiful it has been the, kind of the motto of, of the people who've worked with revolution over the years, over the 25, 30 almost years that we've been here. And Caleb was not an exception to that. He was there, you know, he struggled with things. He dealt with things. And, um, you know, we had to have a lot of hard heart to heart conversations. A lot of like, we got to, you know, there was times where I had to stand in and, and pull him up. Um, and say, Hey man, you can't, <laughs> if we're going to do this, we can't be doing this, you know, and, and those kind of tough conversations that you have, but it was like a brotherhood. And, um, and I honestly, I, to me, that's one of the things I've, I've always held dear about this type of work. And I've always perplexed me about other churches is when they go, oh, this pastor was doing, or this person was doing, and I'm going like, what? Yeah, they're, they're human beings. Like, do we not, is that not all we have to choose from? I mean, do you guys have superhumans over there to work with? Um, you know, he was amazing with kids. He was amazing with my kids. He was amazing w w with Brian's kids. I mean, you know, it's it's one of those things where he was just all earned. And he worked his ass off. You know, we couldn't pay him in the beginning. We were able to give him fun money every now and then. But, I mean, the guy made worked at the pizza store by his house. He worked at the Red Lobster by his house. He kept his jobs he worked his ass off, and then he broke his leg into three places, walking home from work as he slipped on ice. You know, um, the guy was uh, went through a lot, uh, but he really wanted it, and that was the thing. When when uh, me and, and Kristen Becker were doing the Loose in the Bible Belt podcast, he came on as the producer, you know, and he rallied us. He kept, like, cause me and Kristen, you know, she's a comedian, I'm might as well be partially comedian, you know, we're goofballs, you know, and goofing off. And he would always wrangle us up, make sure we got that conversation going. I mean, me and Caleb would do, uh, we would work out podcast ideas. We do interviews of podcasts. We never got out podcasts. We never started, but we were always working on different things. And, um, I was always amazed of like the energy that, that Caleb had and this love for communicating with people and getting people to just hear different voices and do different things. Like he introduced me to so many people that we would kind of speak. And, um, you know, I met this guy online, you know, and he's like, hey, we should do something with the congregation. Like we should do meet your congregation, which obviously, you know, is, has been missing since Caleb left. Um, but started interviewing members of the congregation, started getting more involved with the congregation, setting up uh, Facebook uh, uh, 
sites like for people to just come and talk and have conversations. Um, you know, and then some of his dreams were just way too big. I thought, you know, and, and maybe not too big for, for him, but for me, because I had just been, you know, sometimes, you know, life feels like a hammer and you feel like a nail, you know what I mean? And so sometimes he would take some of that weariness that I have and be like, no, you know, give, give me some new energy, new life. Um, he loved theology, he loved philosophy, and he really knew it well. Um, and that was one of the cool things, um, is that he, he really knew, his, he knew, he loved theology, he loved philosophy, um, he loved the faith, and it was always different challenges and always different new ideas, but his ideas weren't just like, oh, like we're gonna just do a crazy idea because it's the punk rock thing to do, you know? It was like, no, we're, we're gonna, you know, it, they, were, they were always within the depth of theology or the depth of philosophy. Um, always really taking a, a good look at these things. And, and even when we were doing services here in, in, in uh, Washington State, you know, and he would sit behind me and we would do the talk and then we'd have a conversation afterwards and he could read some of your guys' comments and that was really cool. Um, but sometimes the biggest pushback I would get uh, from my talks, <laughs> strangely enough, would be from him. And it was really good. I mean, there was only a few times where I had to talk to him afterwards and be like, dude, that kind of off, took me off the rails a little bit so I didn't know where to go with that. But most of the time... It was sharpening me and letting me know that, oh, you know, he would go, well, what about this? And I would go, oh, well, actually, this lines up with this. And he goes, oh, okay. You know, and, and we were able to figure those things out live with you all. And um, it was, uh, it was pretty, 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 uh, pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool way to do revolution. A couple, we'd always get a couple of people like, oh, who's that guy behind you, you know? Um, but we just dealt with it. Um, like I said, he could share pain. He had empathy. He had sympathy. Um, always getting people together. Oh, it's like, hey, Jay, we're going to get a group of people together. Hey, let's do this revolution thing. Hey, let's meet. Let's get a book study started. Let's do these things. You know, I mean, just for me, like I was feeling like the life was beaten out of me and that I, you know, I just didn't even feel like I had the energy to do these things. And he'd be like, hey, I can arrange it. You know, let's just show up and let's just do this. And, and it was great. It was, it was, it was really, we were, we were, we were really cooking there for a while. Um, when I was going through photos uh, of Caleb, you know, how many photos I saw of him, we were just sitting with groups of the congregation or groups of different people and he would take me to place and go, hey, I went to this church and met these people, or I went to this Buddhist place and met these people, you know, and I went to this church recovery group and met all these people, you know, and he was always out there. I mean, and, and near the end, he, he didn't even have his, his car broke down, and he was still like, he would, either I'd go pick him up Sunday morning and bring him to church, or he, he'd take an Uber, we'd pay for an Uber for him to come to church. You know, he wanted to be there. He wanted to be a part of it. Um, you know, he was... It was a good kid, man. He was young. You know, he was only 33 when he passed away. Um, so when things took the other, another step and, and, and me and my ex decided we wanted to move to Seattle because she had family out here and, and I, we wanted to keep the kids together, you know, I sat down and had a conversation with him, and he goes, I'm in. I want to go. I'll go with you. And he automatically found, found a place, got an apartment, you know. We loaded up a truck and moved to, to, uh, to Seattle. You know, I mean, he, he, he had a, a, a great vision. You know, he believed in this church. He believed in this community. And... Um, and I do feel his absence, you know. Um, luckily, you know, we've got people like Josh, who you guys saw speak last week, and, and, and you know, some other folks who, who encourage me and help me. Um, but, uh, you know, definitely feel his absence. W one of the things, um, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about the today when I was just getting iced tea this morning and, and, and how... He would always have me, you know, 
always had me pick him up a big uh, coffee. Where, whenever we did talks, wherever we did any things, whenever we did podcasts, whenever we were doing anything, I always had to get him like this giant McDonald's coffee, you know? Or there was a gas station by his house and it was like, you know, always had to work out this coffee, you know? Because we were both just like, ugh, exhausted. Um, but he was, in a way, he was like my caffeine, you know? He was the one encouraging me, like, let's do this, let's do this. Um, but what, but you know, Caleb struggled. When Caleb broke his leg, he, he, um, got put on some med meds and it it's it was a stumble for him he'd struggled with some substances and um i'm not going to go too deep into that but um it, it 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 hurt him a little bit and uh and when we got out here that continued and that was tough and and we continued to work together as long as 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 we could um but his life just wasn't going the way it was there. And because of, you know, being a part-time dad and, or full-time dad, really, and, 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 and doing some other things, I wasn't able to just, I can't, I'm not a magician. I I'm not, you know, miracle worker. And um, unfortunately, we were really, he was really struggling. And we came to the conclusion that the best thing for him to do uh, was take some time off get somewhere where he could get some help. And um, it just continued to be a struggle for him. And um, uh, so he decided to, to finally, like it, it was time um, to move home and to be with his folks and um, just to try to get things together. And as far as I know, things were going great. Um, I'm not sure of the cause of death. Um, and, and not that that really matters. Um, you know, but that's tough. It's the tough reality of life is sometimes these addictions and, and, and struggles get in the way, and I'm no stranger to that. Uh, my family's no stranger to that. Um, uh, and, and unfortunately, I, I feel like we didn't leave on the best terms, you know? Um, I felt like, you know, that was eventually going to be fine and we were going to rebuild our bridge, you know. Um, but it was just, it was a tough ending. And it is, when you work together and you love somebody and you care about somebody and you're a friend and you're sharing the same vision, often those breaks can be really tough. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think I've ever had one that was really easy in my whole 25 years of ministry. Maybe one slightly, but, you know, it, there's always a hurt feelings or something because you're passionate about something, you're wanting to create something, you're wanting to build something, and then there's friendship involved. And the, uh, the break can always be painful, you know, in, in different ways, and, and sometimes hurtful. And, uh, and, I, and I guess it was a bit, you know, it was, you know, and um, I was really excited because he was about to start working with Brian again just these past, just last week, they were about to start doing some stuff together. And, um, you know, kind of getting like, hey, you know, this might be time, amends and all these type of things to work out. And unfortunately, um, Caleb passed away before we were able to do that. And death is, I've lost a lot of people in my life that I really love and care about. And it's really tough. And, and the pastor in me is the guy who's like, um, you know, how I, my, my therapist used to tell me, like, would you talk to anybody like that at Revolution with my own thoughts in my head? And I said, no, 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 no. Are you crazy? And, um, and so I have to do that now. And, 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 and like, I know, like, if someone came to me and said, I left a loved one in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a place where we weren't really talking and they passed on, you know, and my thing is like, well, you know, that, that doesn't matter. That doesn't, that doesn't, you know, that's part of life that happens. Um, you know, and it's okay. You know, that's okay. That's just part of the story. And, um. And obviously that's understandable because we don't know how long any of us have here. Um, I think a good thing right now is I don't feel like I'm doing Caleb justice even because um, 
because he was a he, he was a great kid and he loved so much and to be honest with you um, thinking that it, it angers me because I, I know that for Caleb his, his struggle began with uh, prescription opiates you know and, and that whole fiasco and big pharma and all that stuff and, and it's hard not to be completely angry uh, knowing that that's what you know caused so much trouble um, like I said I'm not sure what the cause of death was so I, I can't I, I, it's not fair for me to speculate on that um, I just heard he was hurt that was he got hurt and and um, I, they were waiting to hear back from from I guess a toxicologist or whatever um, but This is the life we live, and it's full of loss, and it's full of pain, and it's full of hurt, and full of brokenness. Um, and this is, I think, one of the reasons why I talk so much about grace, is this is the reality that I've always lived in, is that this happens to all my friends who I've lost in, in different ways, you know, the, the, they were great people. Some of them were struggling, but they were struggling because they were good people. And they were struggling um, to live the life they really wanted to live, and there was outside things affecting that. And that's why I'm always going to have room for grace in my life. Um, I think one of the things I struggled with losing my friend Caleb is uh, realizing that our fallout required uh, some lengthy grace. You know, it required me to let him have some time to look at things and me, you know, like it wasn't anything that we could just fix at that moment. And that sometimes grace takes time um, sometimes reconciliation takes time, you know, and I think that's one of the reasons why I always, I get angry and, or, or, you know, I talk a lot about like arguing well and things like that. Cause sometimes we have to argue for a long time. Sometimes we have to sit and love from afar to quote Zoe. Um, you know, that's just what we have to do. And so I hope in some ways that this type of thing, that this type of loss, um, everything in my life is always using as, as, as something that I hope other people can gain something from. And I know you can gain so much from someone like Caleb's life. I mean, just to be someone who says, I want to help your dreams come true, just to be someone to see the pain in someone else's face and be able to weep on their behalf and to hold them and to say, it's going to be okay you know, we're going to get through this, whatever you need, is a gift. It's such a gift and to not let this world make you into a cold-hearted person, you know, not even to allow addictions and struggles like that to turn you into a selfish person. You know, it, it, you still fight the fight of saying others matter, people matter. And uh, Caleb, I think, always, I know always saw that, you know. he was He was ready to, you know, I was like, buddy, you got to get things straight before we can work together again, you know, and and he was starting to work with other people. And that was great because it was what he wanted to do was help people do their stuff. <laughs> and w w w with no money, with very little money or very little gratitude. Um, I mean, that guy probably heard me do Galatians three or four times. And... Uh, we really would have some really amazing, cool late night conversations. And I just sit over at his, in his apartment and we'd have all these weird talks and we'd argue theology and argue different things like that. And, um, I remember when we first met, he was just like this complete open book, you know, and he was so open that he was saying things on podcasts and I, and all my friends who've done podcasts with him know this. We were all like, whoa, 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 you know? <laughs> you can't say that, you know? <laughs> and, it, and, and sometimes it was good stuff and sometimes it was crazy stuff. But the point was is that he was 
always, um, and what I realized is that he saw my transparency and he goes, I want some of that, you know, and I was going, all right, well, you can have it, but you're going to have to learn to like taper it a little bit just so people hear what you're saying. So they don't just hear this part. They want, you want them to hear this part, you know? Um, and that was cool because he was always open to learning. We were always like, it was nice to have somebody I could help encourage to, to do this work. And, uh, you know, it, <laughs> it, it was funny, you know, and he learned, you know, he did it. He, 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 he's like, well, Jay, you're always just, I want to be transparent, you know. And I'm like, yeah, but I got like five emails about that one second, you know, and and they forgot the rest, you know, and, and um, but he, he, he grew with it. And he challenged the church, though, and that's what I also like. He challenged people in different churches that he worked with and things like that. When he would do this stuff, you know, I can remember one of my friends, he, they had their board of their church come and be like, how could you say this live, you know, because of something Caleb said, but it was the idea of saying like, well, what is this? What is this gathering? What are we doing when we bring people together? Are we not allowed to be transparent? Are we not allowed to be honest? Do we not all have these, these struggles? You know, are we all not in different places in our lives? You know, so even those moments became not just teaching moments for Kayla, but it became teaching moments for us, but also teaching moments for those who said, you know, have this impression of, well, this is the sanction and, you know, this is the church and this is how it's always been. And we're going like, no, 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 no. I mean, that's what I continue to do is like, no, the church is people. <laughs> And uh, Caleb was a great part of that. And he'll always have an everlasting part of this. And I really think he, um, he made revolution better. And uh, he added a lot to revolution and, and, and kept us more connected with the people. And right now I'm just not able to do that stuff because I don't have the knowledge that Caleb had. And um, I don't have anybody here working with me in person. So you know, that'll take time. But the point is, is we lost a good one. We lost a 33 year old kid who loved people and cared about people. And I hope you'll love and care about those folks around you. And, um, and, uh, Caleb will always be a, a shining part of, of revolution. He'll always be that part of me that allowed me to completely fall apart in my life and remain whatever I am now. I, I, I've, I've shied away from the word pastor, to be honest with you, just because I think it's such a loaded thing, but let's just use it for a second. He allowed me to be a pastor when my life fell apart, when I tried to take my life, when I was doing things that most people would say, you're never gonna be a pastor again. I had other pastors contacting me saying, it's time to step down, it's time to give up, it's time to move on. And I had Caleb, and I also don't want to forget my friend Pete Rollins, but I had these two, two folks from completely different walks of life saying, no, your work is vital, you're vital, you're important, no one else can do what you do because you bring something special to it. And how grateful I am to have had two people like that in my life and someone who goes, I will carry this burden for you. I will carry this church for you. I will do this. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it so you can get better because we need you here. And, uh, and for someone to get in a car and drive down and say, this is how much I believe in this work is grace. It's a blessing. You know, Kayla was nothing but a blessing. Uh, the way it ended, you know, it wasn't really me and Caleb. It was me and Caleb and, and substances, you know, um, addiction, which, which, is, is, which is a bastard, um, but it's a reality. It's like a disease, like any other disease. It could have been cancer. It could have been anything else. Um, you know, so we did what we could for each other, but Caleb lived well for his young years, and he brought a lot into people's lives. When I was going through, you know, seeing the different people who he worked with, and did podcasts with, and seeing Kristen talk about our work with him, um, seeing Barry Taylor, uh, who I really love, talking about Caleb, you know, seeing all these different theologians speaking about Caleb, you know, um, our other friend who, who's like an atheist, who, he had, who, who we had come speak at Revolution because he introduced us, seeing her, you know, remembering him, 
um, seeing board members come out and oh Jay, you know, what a lot, you know, seeing all these folks and you know, and seeing hundreds of comments and, and different and on different social media things about Caleb's life, and and he mattered. Caleb really mattered. Caleb matters, and 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 people matter. You matter, you know, and um, he will be greatly missed. Um, I will just flounder, I think, if I continue on, and I don't want to flounder. I just want to say that Caleb was a beautiful person, and he was beautifully broken. Um, I know in my heart of hearts that I did everything I could to help him, and I know in his heart of hearts he did everything he could to help me, and uh, we did our best, and that's all you can do, really, is your best. And it's okay when you know that that was your best. And we did our best for one another. And, um, you know, so we mourn our friend Caleb Rowe today. And, um, and I also say, you know, thank you, Caleb, for keeping this thing going. Uh, thank you, Caleb, for your life. Thank you for your friendships, the ones I didn't even know of. And, and, uh, he was a cool kid, man. It was cool to just see, like, you know, like, a, you know, some random theologian bring up Caleb and how they had this talk together on, you know, text or, like, Instagram or something about theology. And you're going, like, who knew? You know, Caleb was just, you know, just thinking and going and reaching out to people and talking to people. Um you know, very transparent kid, and I'm grateful to have been a part of his life, and I miss him greatly. I miss Caleb greatly, and I'm sorry that we did not get to to uh, sit down and have a, a, a conversation that we needed to have for reconciliation. Um, but may we all be beautifully broken in this world, and may we all have the grace to allow each other to be that. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for tuning in today. Thanks for celebrating Caleb's life with me today. Um, you know, love your friends, love your friends well. And um, you know, take those moments and, and, and do the things you think you should do because we don't know how long we got people around us. And that's tough, that's tough loss. Tough loss, young life. All right, that's all I have today. I, I thank you all so much. I um, hope you have a, a wonderful week and, um, you know, share your memories with, about Caleb, you know, on, on, you know, in different places with people. Let them know what he meant to you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>